I'm here with Lorena and Pia from the board. They are going to teach us, teach me specifically, but teach all you guys, how to make a charcuterie board and, well, you also do crudités, but let me tell you a little bit about the board. I met them, I don't know how long ago it was. When you did crowdfunding. Yeah, like so a few months, months ago. ago. And they, I, I love cheese boards. I've always, I love hosting and I love entertaining. And I try to make cheese boards, but you, both of you do this so, so well that I immediately told them that I had to work with them. I'm like, you have to do a workshop at the shop. You have to just teach people what you do because this is so pretty and it's so helpful if you ever have people at home. So the idea behind this curriculum and this, this video right now is for you to help me and to help everyone else make a quick cheese board at home if they have people over, right? So the idea isn't to do anything really overwhelming. People might have these items, right, in their fridge um, or they might have to get them, but it's not anything that's strange. Um, and it's quick. So talk to me a little bit about what you have here and we can get into the, the how-tos. Okay, so first of all, one of the reasons that we love doing cheese boards as well is because it's something easy that, like you said, we have some of the staples in our pantry. If not, they're easy to get, but it's also easy for people like us that we don't cook. So you know what? You don't cook, you don't you do elaborate dinners, but yeah. you want to entertain at home. What better than doing a cheese board? And this board? feeds people. It like, definitely I mean, does. It no. fills people. Ask my friends, since we started doing this, that's all they get. So yeah. they do, it does. And it's something easy to share. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time making it. Right. You can, and then you can serve it easily too. Right. You don't need plates and utensils. It's, you know, yeah. like little serving plates. It's and easy. you get a lot of variety. You can get yes. a lot of variety. You do, and, and you know what? And one of the things that we like the most is that people gather around the board. Yeah. So when you have different things to eat, people go and scatter away. When you have a board, that's where that. they go. Yeah, so everybody to comes together and they share around the board. And it opens conversation. Hey, yeah. this cheese with this honey, with this crackers, is a great combination. So it's a great idea for entertaining, easy entertaining. Another great thing go. about that is that, let's say you're rushing, you're coming from work and you're late. You can do it with your friends. You do this layout and you have wine. You yes. have them with wine entertained. They might pick from here and there, but they can see how you build the board and it's gonna be nice. You don't have to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So it also I gives like you a little bit of uh, peace of mind if you're running late. I, I'll have people here sometimes and I've gotten into the habit of always buying certain cheeses and always, I mean, I don't do it like this, but now I'll learn. But I, I've gotten into the habit of every time I go to the grocery store, I buy certain cheeses. And if it's last minute and people are coming over, I just pull them out and I pull out some crackers and some honey or fig and I always have something. So it's definitely nice to have something on hand. Yes. I do, and cheeses last for a while. And the same thing with uh, the charcuterie. You can have it well wrapped. They have special bags for cheeses and it will stay in your refrigerator for a long time. So that's one of the great things cool. that you have. Okay, so what we have here is uh, obviously the staple cheeses. We like using three different types of cheeses. Um, we have brie, manchego, and we have uh, goat cheese right here for this demonstration, but we also like at least try to have different flavors of cheeses. Okay. So sheep, um, cow, goat. So I, it has a little bit of a variety, yes, variety so for your- sheep, cow, and goat. Yes, correct. So you also want to have different type of textures. You don't want all the cheeses to be soft. Right. Because you then it's going to be boring. So you want hard cheeses like a manchego and maybe a little bit bouncy cheeses like a gouda. Okay. So have that in mind. So if you want, we'll just start. Yeah. We're going to place the, big, the biggest items on the board, so the cheese. In terms of the brie, we like slicing it. This one was a bigger piece of brie, just because we feel that people get a little bit intimidated when you see the big wheel yeah, on the board. Yeah, they don't want to cut into it. Yes. It's like too yeah. Big. Sometimes we see it in our boards when we used to put the big wheel, like it will be the last thing that will stay on the board because people will be like, oh, it's messy. So now we slice yeah. it in two parts. Yeah. I like that. Exactly. Then we also like the manchego. Manchego is a hard cheese that comes like in a wedge. If you put the entire wedge on the board, people are not going so to cut it or it's cut. hard to cut. It's so very hard maybe to cut. half of the things are going to fly and people are going to stay away from it. So we pre slice it and it's much easier. So just make sure you try to do that when you place it on the board. So, like, so something to think is to make it easier for people to graze. Yes. yes. Like cut your Definitely. cheeses in ways that are going to make it easy for people to come through. Definitely. I like yes. that. I don't do that. The wedge looks pretty but not necessarily convenient for people. Yeah, think about putting a manchego wedge, like usually end up like cutting a chunk. I'm not even sure mm -hmm. how to 
cut it. Yeah, to be like mm -hmm. people, it's, and it's also uncomfortable when you try, it's like, it's too big. Yeah. So like that, you can have like bite size. Right. That's what is ideal. And even though you have the cheese knives, they're not necessarily so easy unless it's a bigger no. one. For no. manchego, especially when it's a hard cheese. So this cheese, we just like fanning it out. It looks pretty. There's different ways that you can put it. We'll have to do a whole other video on how you cut these cheeses because oh, I'm yeah. just wondering how you cut this Pinchego yeah. cheese. Yeah, Pia is the expert. Like, how did you get a triangle out of that? Well, you can buy it on a wedge. Like, if you go to Trader Joe's, it's a Yeah, the wedge. That's how I know yeah. it as a triangle. Well, I, I would guess get it's like a, a sharp, part. like, knife and you kind of slice it. You try to do it thin, thin. also. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. You can put different layers of the cheese, but we'll play with it later on. And then you want to put your goat cheese. The goat cheese is the same thing. It comes with the wheel. It comes with the red wax that you don't want to eat. So we like taking that out and just leave it in, in cubes. We don't like cutting it perfect. We cut it in different sizes just so it doesn't look store-bought. And it's a little bit more like right. artisanal. So you want to lay out your cheeses in a way that they're not everything close to each other. Why do you cube this one? It's a Gouda. It's a Gouda. It's easier to eat and it's just a different texture so and a different presentation. Mm -hmm. It's soft. You want to do it. And again, just do it in different sizes. It doesn't have to be perfect and it just makes it look nicer. Okay. Okay. So, so we're going to place this. Starting with the cheeses. Okay. Cheeses and place them separate from each other because you don't want everything white on the board. Got it. So you want to try to do that. Then the next step that we want to do is we want to place our meats. Okay. We like using a, like for a size board like this at least two types of uh, meats. We like serrano, you could do prosciutto, and we like also salami, because salami is very versatile. It comes in wheels and you can present it in different ways. So in terms of the prosciutto, we like cutting it in half, or the serrano. I don't know if it's happened to you guys, but you have the long strip mm -hmm. and then it's super big, difficult to eat. So we cut it in half, so it's easier for the people. Again, we're trying to make it easy for yes. everybody that is gonna eat. Yeah, you make like a bite size. You know, mm -hmm. you can grab a cracker, a little piece of serrano, a little slice of cheese. I know, I totally just bunch it. I'm like, I, I prosciutto is so overwhelming to me when I went to buy and it and taking it out right. of the packaging. Yes. That I just, but isn't it, and it like, breaks. when you go eat it, isn't it like uncomfortable? Yes. Like a long uh, thing, yes. you're like, it's this very, is too big. Very so in half is like are. a good bite size. So here we cut it in half. You could do what you were saying that you just leave it in a chunk and, and drop it. I mean, I'm, I do that because I'm being it, lazy no, to be honest. It, it actually looks very pretty. You can put a lot of them and like make me do a river. The way that we do it, we just fold it in half and we just start going down and placing it. So it's like individual portions for everybody. So, so we much go down. easier. It's, like it's much easier to handle and yes. style. Yes, definitely. Because you're pre-cutting it, so it's not this long piece of prosciutto pre or serrano. Pre-cutting it is definitely a, uh, a big thing for us. It makes it everything so much easier to serve and for whoever is, you know, eating it. So, so far, is, is there like a certain ratio of cheese to charcuterie? Like if you... I mean, obviously it's gonna depend on the size of the party, but let's say for every three cheese has two meats, or do you guys just sort no, of necessarily. vary organically? No, necessarily. We try to do three cheeses, two meats, or four or five cheeses, three I mean, meats. It's like, okay. But it depends. It depends. I think it's also based on your guests, on what your what preferences, they like. what you like. Um, if you have vegetarian friends, I would just obviously focus on it. Put still meats farther away from the cheeses, but still include some meat for those like me that love it. Okay. So now, in terms of the salami, the salami generally comes like in a circle. If you just place the salami like that, I, it doesn't look very appetizing. So what we like to do is do some salami flowers. So it's simple, you take your, this, you fold it in half and then you fold it again, and that's it. And then one is gonna help the other one to stay standing. So obviously now, once we start doing more, we'll be able to oh, place them. So here. So you can do that with your mortadella. You can if do it comes with in a mortadella. circle, you exactly. can do. Exactly. And, and the fun part of also about cheese boards is that you can try. I would go, I love going to Whole Foods and buying small pieces of cheese that I've never had. And then from there, if I like it, 
You start incorporating them. I start incorporating them, or even for my house. I always have cheese in my house. Always, always, always. So I buy a new cheese, and then if I like it, I start putting it or not, I move on to the next. But it, it's good because they give you the option of buying smaller pieces. What are the most common cheeses that you buy? So or that you use? We like triple creme, a brie that is very soft. Uh, another one that we like that it elevates, we use it in our large boards. Our, it's the Humboldt Fog. It's a goat cheese that is very artisanal and it's from California and it's very, very good. So that's one of the cheeses that we Humboldt like Fog. to do. It is, it's, and it's beautiful. So once you place it on your board, it just elevates the board by itself. Okay, so next we like going with the fruits and uh, let's say the accessories. The accessories. So we'll add the She's larger fruits. She's like, I like fruits. that accessory. I know, I know. I like it because I can pronounce it. So we go with the larger fruits, like grapes. And uh, grapes are a big staple on cheese boards. I think yeah, every I single mean, cheese board that yeah, you see. Has grapes. Has grapes. I, I know to buy grapes that I do. Yes. And, and generally, you do have grapes uh, on, hand. On, on hand. So we also want to put anything that is seasonal, because we don't want to go crazy and find a certain fruit pomegranates look beautiful, but they're not they're not seasonal. So we want to make sure that we go for whatever is there the that is section. pretty, that is going to give us a little bit of color. So the idea like is whatever you find at the supermarket that is fresh in season, yes. grab it. Yes. yes. There's other staples that we like as well, that if you don't find them fresh, like figs, we buy them dry. And you'll have the dry same fruit. deliciousness and you add Fruits and those sustain your pantry for a long time. I so always also have like dried, yeah, dried dry, apricots. Buy a whole bunch of fruit, dry fruit, keep them in your pantry and they're gonna be great. Okay? Kiwi so is in season. Kiwi is generally very easy to find here in Miami. We never have an issue to find kiwi. So we place, let's say, the larger ones. We then we wanna decorate or we wanna enhance brie because brie is very bland. So we like using strawberries, for example. So we like placing them like this. And then we like um, blueberries. It just gives pops of color. And I think we're done with, uh, with the fruits. Then we continue with everything else. So we like adding nuts. We like adding nuts because it gives a little bit of crunchiness and saltiness to the board. Are there other nuts that people can use? Those are, these are pistachios. Yeah. Those are pistachios. We use walnuts. We use almond. almonds. Marco and almonds are great. Marco and almonds. They come with almond. rosemary, truffles. Oh, They're delicious. Where I like you find those at Whole Foods? You have Whole Foods at Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah, a lot of these items, like Trader Joe's is a great place to get if you want to make Cheese a board, board at home. I think you can find everything there. They have a huge variety of cheeses. If you want to get a little bit more sophisticated, you can go to Whole Foods. They have an amazing variety. So we can add the, the dry fruit. Would you say like maybe a rule of thumb is don't place similar um, categories next to each other. So spread the fruit, spread the, you know, does that make sense? Yes, and also the colors. You don't want to put all nice. your, you know, reds, and, you know, so it's like nice as well and varied very yeah. exactly and and you also try let's say apricots go very well with uh brie so maybe you want to place it next to the brie so you also guide your guests the palette, the of palette. what to combine what to mix what goes good with what so then we love olives are a great great uh combination and uh complement to cheese and to meats so you'll also find olives. If you have smaller ramekins, let's say this board is it's a little yeah, larger. Yeah, you can put the ramekin on the board. You could put the actual ramekin on the board or a smaller ball. And it's perfect because olives, we have to make sure that we don't, we take out all the the juice or the brine. Do you get the olives so it doesn't, pitted? No. We, we, they're with the pits. With the pits, why? It has why? a lot more flavor. Mm. We like the cornichons. I love cornichons. They are great. Also, again, pop of so color. So underrated. They are. So you've underrated. got some green, you've got the red of the meat, you have the white of the cheese, um, and then you have like some orange through the fruit. I like that. You bring in more color through the fruit. So having a nice variety seems... Well, with a good variety, you also can, you know, experiment. Because right. people sometimes shy away of what to eat 
you know, with wine. You know, you can always do, just experiment and mix, you know. And try different things. Yes. Then we also like adding honeys, jellies, fig spreads, because they're gonna be, again, a compliment. It's gonna bring sweetness to your cheeses and it's gonna bring down a little bit of the saltiness. So you can also place it close to a cheese that goes very well with honey. Like so like the brie goes very well, so you wanna place it, you can put it in little jars, um, there's honey dippers, there's a whole bunch of things that you can add. The more the better, because you're gonna just bring more variety for your guests to enjoy. I love this. Then we like, we love, we're big I'm fans ahead, but of uh, <laughs> honeycomb. Honeycomb is delicious, and there's uh, people that think that you can eat it. You definitely can eat it, Where it's edible. We buy it at Whole Foods. Uh, you can find it from a company called Savannah Bee, but they also have uh, some local companies that we're working with to try to uh, enhance, up. yeah, uh, local and help local businesses. Yes. But it's very good. And then finally, like, I left the best for last. I love figs. I love figs. Love figs. Not only because they're good, but because they're pretty. Yeah. And I'm about, uh, I love pretty things. So, we love now, figs are in season, mm -hmm. so we like buying figs now. We make sure we can put it, and then you just place it anywhere. At this point, you're just trying to fill out decorating. spaces, you're decorating, you wanna make sure that everything looks pretty. And if you don't have fig season, they sell them dry. They're the same, they're very good, they're delicious, and they go perfectly with all this, like a manchego. So you again, just place them strategically and then you Yeah, you're them. just decorating at this point. At this point, we're decorating. Then you wanna just add the final touches. And the final touches for us are the herbs. We love adding rosemary. Rosemary, the smell, once you wash it, the aroma is very good. So it gives you a pop of color. So at this point, I would just stand back and say, okay, where do I have everything that it looks very bland? And I would put some rosemary. I love how rosemary smells. I know. We use it in our arrangements towards the end of the year. I love using mint and rosemary. So we like putting it, let's say, on the brie. Brie, again, is bland. So a, a little spring of uh, rosemary looks beautiful. Same here. So with the rosemary, you'll probably have bigger branches. You don't want a huge branch in the middle of a smaller board, or even if it's a big board. So we like cutting it in half, right. and you'll have more options of being able to just place it. So you'll just decide where you maybe here to bring in a little bit of color. Take here just decorative. to uh, take advantage of the little piece that you have left and you're done. It's very quick. That was, I was actually so quick. I think as long as you have like what you need on hand or if you're gonna go get it, it's so easy. So just to walk through it, you're gonna start with your cheeses you're then going to add in your meats to the board and then the accessories start. And then accessories can be seasonal fruit, grapes. I think grapes are always in season. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, seasonal fruits, grapes. Then you add in your nuts and your cornichons. Cornichons? Yes, cornichons. cornichons. That's a Cornichons, <laughs> cornichons. Um, and then any dried, any dried fruit. Like apricots are great. I always buy apricots. The fig is Figs great. Always Sometimes I'll do cranberry. Cranberries are nice. Try cranberry. Yeah. <laughs> no, cranberries are nice. <laughs> no, no, they're nice. You, they're gonna look beautiful in I'm, Christmas. I'm, I'm a, next I'm to a the rookie. rosemary. I don't know these. No, no, I we we've, we've used like cranberries that. in December. We so, do, we do. You know, that's something else to talk about. Seasonality. Well, that's why seasonality mm -hmm. is so important. Because over the holidays, it would be so nice to put some cranberry next to rosemary, and then you have that red and green. Yes, exactly, and pomegranate. That also brings you that pop pomegranate. of red. Pomegranates pomegranate are beautiful. Pomegranate in season one? Soon, we yes, should be soon. starting to see um, pomegranate coming in soon. So, And then your honey, and then your honeycomb, I love that, and then the rosemary to dress it up. Yes. And then the crackers. Some people like putting crackers on the plate. I'm not ah, you brought it. So yes, I was actually gonna do it and I, that's okay. Forgot. But you there is a reason. There is a reason why we don't put it on our boards when we deliver to our clients. Because if it's on our board and I bring the board, like let's say three hours before your event, you're gonna put it in the fridge. Your yeah, crackers yeah, yeah. are gonna get stale and like you know they're gonna get moisture and they're not gonna be as good. I understand. And also when we sell our boards, we want to make sure that you have a, as much product as possible. We don't want to fill it up with crackers that would have taken a big portion of the board. Got it. So we set it aside and then you'll have more product 
once we deliver the board. But you can if you wanted to, Yes, right? if you're doing it at home, let's say you wanted to place them and you wanted to put them over here, I would leave the space, do the board, even put them on the board, and if you're done before, take it out, put it in the fridge, and then just replace them again. Like so that. you can do that. And then something else that is important to know is that let's say you did it with time because you're very organized and you have extra time, so you did it in the morning and your friends are coming at night. We recommend you uh, take out the will board. Will ever be me? I know. <laughs> but someone it, it will could be. one day it could be. be me. One day when you have the time, you want to make sure that you take out your board 30 minutes, 40 minutes before your guests arrive. Okay. Because cheese is intended to be eaten room temperature. Got it. So I you eat that. cheese that is all hard. These the flavor is not going to be I the take same. it out of the fridge no. and I just set it. The thing is, like, it's like wine. The flavor, you know, yeah. you need to let it soften up so you, then you can get the best flavors out of it. Yeah. That's, so, that's so good. So that we always know. emphasize it when, when we deliver our boards. Please make sure you take it out because it's going to make a difference. And any cracker recommendations? We love these ones. They have a little bit of flavor. But they're with sesame, they're delicious. Also the plain regular wafer ones that like the water yeah, crackers. Yeah, like a water cracker. They're also good because they don't have, uh, they're not gonna mix with the flavors of what taste. you're coming and they not have too some, much taste. They have some fig crackers, fig oh, and olive oil crackers. Those, oh, those are, are delicious. I and absolutely love them. Love them. They're great and they're but great they are, like they for a brie. But they a lot of flavor. But they're good for a brie because a brie is very um, subtle. So it's a great combination of flavors. If you're gonna eat a blue cheese, you wanna make okay. sure that you have a, you. a lighter so cracker. So you maybe wanna make sure if you have that kind of cracker that has so much flavor, yeah. have like a, a more plain cracker. A plain a cracker or plain people. cheese, yes. I like yes. that, I like that. It's like a pairing with the crackers as well. Bread is also great. And this is it a bread. slices yeah. of a baguette. It's also great. So like you this. have, a, a, there's endless limits of um, options for your crackers and your bread to complement your boards. I love this, thank you for coming. No, it was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. We loved it. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to make your cheese board at home. And I hope all your cheese boards look like this going forward. I'm sure, please. You know what? Come on, we would love, that. if you do them, tag us. Yeah, we tag love the board. It. You guys are the board Miami? The board the Miami. Miami. Um, if you do them, tag the board, let them know you learn how to do it. and. Yeah, don't shy away from no. doing it. If oh I God. can make I this. Think as long as you have these things, there's certain things that you can buy beforehand, right? Like yes. Buy pistachios, always have them in your pantry. Um, buy the dried fruit, right? Maybe some fig, maybe some apricots. And then whenever you go to the grocery store, just make sure you have grapes. You buy some cheese, some rosemary. Meat, rosemary. Rosemary. I, yeah. These are all things theme. that you can totally just have in the pantry that you can just whip up and. On a yeah, and look, rosemary, you have, you're gonna have leftover when you buy the little boxes. You can decorate the crackers yeah. if you have them aside. It'll help you enhance your um, plating experience a little bit more. Um, and then I love using, in my house I have always pistachios, let's say, I have uh, mason jars because those keep oh, things keep for a longer inside. time. Oh, yeah, so they don't go stale. Do you put it's your really dry fruit good. In mason jars? I do. I do. I'm a mason jar fan. Take a picture of your pantry. I'll show <laughs> so you. I can see. I love mason jars. I love organizing. Um, okay, well that's it. That's all we got. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Now we get to eat it.